Rocky and I go around with, the, with these two video cameras and interview lots of startups that you watch every, every day. But um, what if you could do this live? And what if you could participate and ask us questions and get involved? Well, there's a company called Spreecast that we're going to hear from right now that does just that, and it's really cool. Who are you? My name is Jeff Fleur. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Spreecast, which is a new social video platform that I'm excited to tell you about. Uh, before that, I've been done other consumer internet things, including I was one of the founders of StubHub.com as well. StubHub. StubHub. <laughs> I bought my World Series tickets for Rocky on there. So uh, awesome. Thanks awesome. for building a previously great company, or it still is a great company. Yeah, um, thanks for using the service. So video, video is hot right now because everybody's getting you know decent laptops with a video camera in it. And what do we do with these things? You know, we've seen Google Hangouts come out that let you do video. What, what's your service? I guess. Yeah, so Spreecast is a social video platform that lets people broadcast together. And really, we're all about face-to-face -face conversations over the internet. So, you know, over the last 10 years, there's been just a huge explosion in the number of conversations that people are having. People are having conversations on Twitter or on Facebook or in blog posts, and people respond to these posts, and there's threads that ensue with really interesting conversations. And, and what we're doing at Spreecast is we're saying, here's another forum, another format to have face-to-face -face conversations using webcam, using your, your computer, and talking to people face-to-face -face in a real-time, synchronous way, as opposed to text-based asynchronous. Yeah, and it, it, it's hard to know where to start with you guys because there's so many video things out there. I mean, there's Skype to talk to your parents or talk to your coworkers. There's Google Hangouts that let you have eight people going at one time. What, what are you guys for, I guess? Yeah, well, so you know, there's, there's, there's kind of a couple different buckets. I mean, obviously Skype and, and iChat are really for a private conversation. So that's, um, that's one domain where people are you know, in, a, in a siloed environment talking to one or two or three other people face to face. Um, and, and those tools also require a download. So you need to download onto your machine some software in order to make those work. Um, Spreecast is really more about public face-to-face -face conversations. So um, the, same, the same types of conversations that people are having on Twitter, that people are having on Facebook around timely topics um, where you'll see f Twitter light up with something one day when there's news of Tim Tebow going to the Jets, which happened last week, or something like that. And people have conversations about this on Twitter, on Facebook. Well, now we're seeing people to start to have these face-to-face -face public forum conversations on Spreecast as well. Yeah, there, I guess there's two ways to do a public thing. I'm on the Gilmore Gang every Friday, and we use Skype with uh, five computers. So there's some guy, and Steve Gilmore has five computers in his house, one, you know, one for each Skyper who's on, on the call, and then we have a TriCaster that has a professional editor who switches between those things and feeds that out to the out to the web, and it goes out to YouTube and out to TechCrunch's video thing and stuff like that. I guess that's the pro way of doing what you guys are doing, right? Yeah, well, yeah I mean, basically, it, 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 it takes that entire process and your entire setup with five different Skypes and a TriCaster, which is a twenty thousand dollar piece of equipment, and. It basically puts that thing into a single website, into a single, and you have all the producer controls that allow you to bring people on camera, switch between different people, take people off camera, swap people in and out. You can preview people's streams yeah. before you bring them on. So, and you can get participation from the audience, which is what your, your setup doesn't allow. So you basically get a lower cost, easier solution that has a lot more functionality. I guess that's where I, I, I'm struggling at who you're for because you could you you're being used by people who get together and drink on Friday afternoon, and they might be in different cities, and they just want to have a video chat back and forth with multi-party because you can have four people, right? Right. All the way up to a professional Gilmore Gang level, or you're on Politico uses you guys. And yeah, there, there's been, there's been some big media companies like Politico and Viacom have used Spreecast. We've had celebrities, um, bands like One Direction and and uh, Demi Lovato have been on Spreecast engaging with their fans. So, and then, we, and then to your point, we do go all the way down to kind of people having sort of casual chats as well. So it really is a, a broad spectrum of types of users and types of use cases. And one of the great things about Spreecast is the flexibility because there are so many different ways it can be used and different applications for it. And we're really trying to serve, you know, serve all, all of that. 
Um, and we think it's yeah. a great platform for really all of those different use cases. Today it's a, it's a web app, so you run it in a web browser on a desktop or a laptop computer, right? It, it can't run on an iPad, can it? That's right, so today it, it runs in a browser. Um, okay. There's no download required, um, so uh, you need to have Flash installed, but 99% of com people computers already have Flash installed. Except um, for iPads and iPhones. Except for iPads <laughs> and iPhones, which is right. So, so, and, and so for I iPad and iPhone and iOS devices, we're, um, we're, we're in the process of building uh, an iOS app that will, be, that will be coming out soon. Okay, very cool. And so when we sign in, what do we see? How do we get started with yeah. this? And does it cost any money or is it a free service? Yeah, well let me ask that, that answer that one first and then I'll talk about okay. what do you see. So it's, today it's completely free. Um, we're, we're in public beta. We've been in public beta for about three or four months. Um, and we haven't started to monetize yet. Eventually, our, our monetization will kick in and there'll be some ads and, and other sort of premium services that, premium features that you'll have to pay for and such. But, th but today, it's, it's, it's completely free and there's no monetization. Um, the, the, the sort of what do you see question, you know, we, people come into Spreecast from lots of different sort of um, gateways, if you will. Um, a lot of the people who first experience Spreecast may experience it on an embedded player. Yeah. So the entire Spreecast experience is embeddable on any third party site. So, so Pol Politico can embed the player right into their blog or into their into media their site. site, their website? I exactly, and that's exactly what they did. So they, they basically used Spreecast's embedded player, they put it on the, on the Politico site, they had you know people kind of uh, at their political offices, as well as you know, someone on, on, on Capitol Hill, someone at the White House, sort of all talking about the, the kind of political news of the day, and, and that's how Politico used it. But yes, it was embedded on their site. Um, other people may come to Spreecast.com, which is our own site, and experience the product there. Um, and you know, on Spreecast.com, you'll see archived Spreecasts. One thing I didn't mention is that um, you know every Spreecast is recorded and available for playback. So you can go to Spreecast and you can watch our entire library of content of all of these face-to-face -face conversations that people have had in the past. You can also easily create a Spreecast right from our homepage, as an example, and it's just a very quick you know, five-second process. You give it a name, you schedule a time, you decide if it's gonna be public or private, and then you create your Spreecast. So um, that's another thing you can do right by going to Spreecast.com, and finally, you could go and you could look at a live Spreecast that somebody else created, and you could watch that passively and be a participant. You can join in with text-based chat, you can ask questions or make comments, and you can, in fact, request to join on camera. So you can, um, just as a, uh, a passive uh, participant, um, you can actually become very active by, by joining on camera as well. Yeah. So let's say we wanted to do a video show, yeah, and we wanted to invite Rocky to be a participant. How do we do? Can we invite people to be on our show, and and how do we do that? Yeah, sure. So we have a lot of interesting invitation mechanics that allow you to bring in people from all of your social networks. So one of the great things about Spreecast is it's really cross-platform. We integrate with Facebook, we integrate with Twitter, we integrate with Google Plus, we integrate with LinkedIn. So when you create a Spreecast. You're given uh, some some tools to invite your to invite people. You can invite yeah. them through a Facebook message. So you'll see your entire if you're authenticated with Facebook, you'll see your entire list of Facebook friends, and you can just check boxes and people get invitations right through Facebook to come to the Spreecast. You can invite people through uh, through email. You can also have followers on Spreecast. So we have our own following mechanic that um, people might follow you on Spreecast, and you can invite any of your followers on Spreecast to come in as well. So does it show if those people are online? By the way, um, it shows. Uh, no, it does okay. not currently show if they're online. Because um, that would be useful if you're trying to create an instant spreecast. You want to know who's online and who will accept your exactly. And, and, and that that is something that we've talked about internally and sort of you know on the on the roadmap, if you will, of what, where we want to go. Um, but it will, for example, for Facebook, when it lists your Facebook friends, it will show you who already is on Spreecast. So it'll yeah. prioritize the people who've already created a Spreecast account, as an example. Um, so you can maybe maybe invite those people as a first priority to the extent that you want people who are already familiar. And Facebook shows when Rocky's online already. So I, That's right. I can chat him up. Okay, Rocky. You want to be on our show? We're starting a show in 10 minutes or something like that. That's right. And then he can text back and go, oh, okay, sure, I'll be right there. That's right. And, and it's all based on a URL, so it's a persistent URL. So all you have to do is share the URL link with him through something like a Facebook chat, and he just clicks on that, and then he's there. He's on the page. He can join on camera. He can come in. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's very flexible, it, you know, but you, you brought up the point of, of, of Facebook chat and, and presence, and you can actually build on top of Facebook's presence, so we can, we can eventually expose that ourselves on our site, who are your Facebook friends, for example, are online right now. Can we control who is see being seen on the player? You know, because let's say the three of us are live, we can be all three on, on air at the same time, 
or can somebody like a, another producer click on us and, and make us full screen, take over our screen? Yeah, so the producer, anybody who's a producer, so by definition, the creator of this precast is a producer, and that person can designate other people to be co-producers, either on camera or off camera co-producers. And any one of those producers can, you know, X people off. We, we call it Xing them off. So take them off the, the, the main video pane. They can, they can highlight somebody so they're really taking up the entire video screen. They can bring people on and off at their will. And when, when, when somebody requests to join in from, from the audience, from the participants, the, the producers can preview that person's stream before deciding, hey, do I want to let this person on or not? And they can chat back and forth with the individual. So there's a lot of controls that the creator and other producers have to really control that entire experience all in, you know, all in that main video pane. So let's say I, uh, we start this show and I tweet it out to my 200,000 followers or put it on Facebook to my 100 and something thousand followers and 500 people show up. Can all 500 watch us? Yeah, all 500 will watch you live. Um, any of those 500 can use the text chat to, to in, involve themselves in the conversation. They can, they can do what we call our comments question feature, which allows them to ask a comment, ask a question or make a comment that actually gets addressed on the main screen, almost like a lower third in TV. And they can, in fact, it, it, it request to join on camera. So people can say, hey, I want to ask Robert a question. They can request to join on camera. You or, or Rocky, if he's an off-camera producer, can review those requests, can see people's video, pull someone on, and there you are in, talking to the person face-to-face. -face. You, know, you might be at your house, they might be in, you know, in Tokyo, and you're having a conversation you know, live, face-to-face, -face, with you know, thousands of people watching. And any of those people can kind of join in the conversation, uh, but you get to control who comes on and when. No, that's cool. So uh, I'll see on my screen if Rocky uh, accepts a question. He can just drag that over to uh, the video window, and it shows up right there, and we can like like your uh, your friend when we were just playing with it said what what's your favorite dinosaur and yeah. and uh, I said Tyrannosaurus rex of course it, but it, uh, that's right <laughs> so so yeah it's all drag and drop functionality so these producer controls you know you see all the requests coming on cam to, to come on camera you see all the comments and question requests and again you, you as a producer you can review those requests, you can approve them, you can deny them, and you, you just drag and drop them into the main video pane, and there it is right there. Any of the, the comments or questions actually have clickable links, so if you put like a Twitter handle, it'll be clickable and it'll open up a new tab with somebody's Twitter page. If you uh, put in a URL for a website, www.spreecast.com, that becomes clickable and that will launch a new tab in the browser with the Spreecast website. So, there, there's a lot of functionality built into that comment and question where you can really address an audience and you can use that feature to refer to things that you may be talking about or answer questions and have it there for people to see as you're addressing the question. Now, if somebody has bad audio because they're not using a headset and they're getting echo or something like that, can you mute specific people? While who aren't yet? Who aren't talking right now? Yeah. Or don't so, need to be on so there? each individual controls their own mic and, um, and and output, both the speaker volume and the microphone volume. Um, we haven't yet built it where the producer can control each one's individually, but that that's a great idea and something that we've talked about internally and something that's technically feasible. Um, we, you know, we um, we do have echo cancellation, so you, you don't really if you've got a computer that's you know built in the last three or four years. Um, you, you're, you should be okay without, without headphones, actually. There should not be an echo. Now, sometimes, if you've got an older computer or if there's latency in your network connection, that echo cancellation may not work as well, in which case, yeah, putting on the headphones definitely addresses it and yeah. then it's completely gone. But um, in, in, in most cases, people can just you know, talk to their computer just uh, without any echo. So after we're done with this show, we just hit stop, and does it automatically record and ha have that as an archive? Yeah, so everything's recorded and, and archived and available for playback. Um, when you, as, the, as, as a producer, you, you get to choose when the spreecast ends. You just click End Spreecast, the thing ends, and immediately it's available for, for playback, and it's right at that same URL. So um, anybody who goes to that URL, just right there, plays it back. People now, if, who were, if I had embedded uh, the live player on my blog, does it automatically switch to the archive? It on does. That? It oh, does. So cool. that same embedded player will be the live spreecast, and then when it goes to archive, it's right there as an archive. And if you want to, you know, you can take it off, you can leave it up, but it's now in an archive format. It's the same player, the same embed. Can I, can I yet choose to distribute it to YouTube? Um, so right now, you need, to play the you need to play the video, the archive back in our player. Um, we are thinking about um, some premium features that would allow you to sort of download just a, a video file of the entire thing. But keep in mind that the video file is only part of the experience. You're going to be missing the chat, right? When you play these things back in our player, you see the chat playback in time 
just as it happened in the live experience. Things like that will be missing if you, if you, if you just get that video file. But um, we, are, we are talking internally about uh, making those, those video files available on, uh, on a single file basis. Cool. Tell me about the company. I, you know, uh, how was this funded and how was it started? Sure. So um, I, I started the company about a year and you know, a little over a year ago. Uh, my first company was StubHub.com. So I started that back in 2000 and sold that to eBay in 2007. Um, you know, took some time off, and, and when I started this, um, you know, kind of we, we brought in some of the same individuals who, who were investors at, at, at StubHub. So we have sort of a list of individual kind of investors, guys like Frank Biondi, who ran Viacom for a long time, and Gordy Crawford, who uh, who is a big media and entertainment investor at the Capital Research Group, and Ed Scott, who was a founder of BEA Systems. So these are individuals who invested in StubHub and have now invested in Spreecast. And I'm an investor as well in the company. So it's really you know not institutional uh, investors, but more kind of individuals. Um, and and some of our key key guys like Ron Levy and and Colin Evans and uh, Keith Carter are guys that I worked with at StubHub. And then we've brought in some some additional. You know, great, great people on our team like Mike Slemmer, who um, is another one of, is our chief architect. So we've we've we we've, we've put together a team that is both some StubHub people as well as some 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 new folks who are really solid people. So yeah. it's a, it's a re it's about we have about 16 employees. It's a fairly small company. Um, we're based here in San Francisco. We've also got a guy in New York, um, and uh, the company's growing really fast and doing yeah. well. But we're very focused right now on sort of product and iterating on product and less focused on you know growing huge right now, but yeah. nonetheless, we're growing very fast. Tell me about that. How are people hearing about it? Is it just finding them on, uh, finding you on uh, yeah. Politico and all these websites? It's really, I mean, it's, it's almost entirely so what I would ca categorize as sort of organic or kind of social media driven viral kind of marketing where, you know, the product itself by definition is a social product, right? There, you, you do this in groups. The, the whole point of a spreecast is to have other people, you know, you don't just do a spreecast by yourself. You have yeah. You know, other people you're talking to, in many cases, you know, tens of other people or hundreds or thousands of other people that may be in a single spreecast. So we've, I think I mentioned this, but we've had some celebrities who've come on to promote movies, like Reese Witherspoon promoted a movie, One Direction is a, is a boy band that was on talking to fans. And so each time one of these people comes on to create a spreecast, they're using our functionality to tweet it or to like it on Facebook or to post Facebook comments and their communities come in and they learn about Spreecast, they come to our site and they don't only participate in the Spreecast, they also might create their own Spreecast and invite their own friends. So you sort of get this kind of natural uh, viral and social dynamic. But again, we've been more focused on product as opposed to that growth, but that sort of happens you know, whether or not we're focused on it. Tell me about your infrastructure. How do you build a video company like this? Because it, it's it hasn't really been done before uh, of sharing yeah. videos like this. It's very simple. It's very easy to scale. It really, it really low. I mean, relative to when I started StubHub, which is 12 years ago now, and just sort of all the operations, technical people you would need, and you know, so you know whether it's Rackspace or anyone else, you know, there's a lot of advantages for for startups to build on that infrastructure, and that's exactly what we've done. So yeah. you know, we we leverage uh, you know CDN as well as as well as infrastructure providers um, in the cloud space to to. To, to grow, and we've got a, but we've got a real good team of engineers who are more focused on software development. Oh, very cool. It, the cloud really is changing how companies can build it, isn't it? It really is. It really is. It, you know, I didn't realize StubHub started 12 years ago. Yeah, StubHub was started in. So uh, you had to build your own data center, your own little rack in a in a in a cage. We somewhere. had we had our own. Yeah, we we kind of we kind of moved a couple times in terms of how we were doing that, but we started off. We were. I don't even think this company's around anymore. But Navisite was yeah. the was the sort of. Um, I think they ended up getting bought by Equinix or something. But they're, you know, you know, sort of a co-located facility where we had our own equipment and. They would help us with certain things, but occasionally we'd actually have to drive down there and swap a box out and that kind of stuff. So, it's just it's just different now. Entrepreneurs should hear that story, right? Because that's the old world, and yeah. it, it took a lot of a lot of work to do that kind of stuff. Now you just click on an iPad and start a server up, and you're in business. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, <laughs> it, I wish that meant that just everything was easy, but it's not quite. It doesn't mean that everything's easy. You know, it means that that piece of it is is easier and. It is not necessarily even cheaper because it's still the, the, the bills actually do get pretty significant uh, pretty quickly. Yep. And at some point, I think it actually probably is even more expensive. But in the early days, it's less about the money savings and more about just kind of the the less human resources you need and the sort of the, the, the flexibility of it all. Now, this is actually where we win business over Amazon because we have traditional hosting as well. And and that once your traffic is stable and and predictable, 
it is cheaper to still go traditional because uh, you you can max out those servers and that yeah. resource. With cloud, it's great if you're spiky. If you're a startup, yeah. your traffic's all over the place. You get on TechCrunch one day, and then the next day it goes down, and then yeah. the next day you're on some other site, and, and it goes like this, right? Yeah. And cloud is a lot better for that. Yeah, and, and it's funny you brought up spikes because you know our business does, definitely has some spikes when we have you know a really popular celebrity on or something like that. We'll definitely get a spike, and so we do need to deal with that kind of nature to our business as well. For right, sure. cool. Well, thanks for coming up yeah, over thank you and for uh, me. showing it to me. We're going to play with it because we're looking for live video, interactive uh, social things like this to play with, because it, it's not all about two cameras that nobody can interact with. Right. Yeah, that's so, the beauty yeah. of it. I mean, you, you get you get sort of all this kind of multi-camera functionality. You know, like when we were talking about political, they they actually used it in such a way where they didn't actually allow audience participation. They were just using it to have cameras out in the field that they could bring in and out to a conversation. But then a lot of people do open it up for audience participation, so people can come in and join from their own camera. You know, on their on their laptop or desktop computer. So, yeah, you know, please let us know if there's anything we can do to help you out as you're playing with it, or yeah. you know, if, you, if we, we we have some guys internally that kind of help with stuff if you need it, and we'd love to help out. Very cool. Where do we learn more about it? Um, if you go to spreecast.com, you can just it's click the... It's spelled weird, right? It's, it's, it's S-P-R-E-E. -E. So it's just like a, a spree, like a shopping spree or a shooting spree, right? So it's actually a word. It's like a, a flurry of activity is what it means. And so spreecast is kind of, you know, flurry of activity um, kind of mixed with like a broadcast type of thing. So that's that's the name, spreecast. And you go to spreecast.com, S-P-R-E-E-C-A-S-T.com. And... Um, you know, you can check out the about, there's like a, an about section, help section, you can kind of read all about it there, and you can also send an email to customer service at spreecast.com with any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Very cool, thank you so yeah. much for coming over. Thanks very much. Bye.